I'd gone to nursery school, picked her up. We were just walking down the street, getting ready to do one of our fun activities. When all of a sudden, she went, "Look!" and pointed at something on the sidewalk right in front of us. I, of course, looked, and she said, "Money." It was a nickel. Savannah, you found money. Savannah was looking at it, and she said, "But who lost it?" Honey, do you see anybody looking for that nickel? She looked to the left. She looked to the right. Meantime, people are walking around behind us because we're looking at the nickel. No. Are you going to just leave that nickel there? That money that you found? No. She reached down. She picked it up, and she said, "I think I will put it in the pig for other people." Touched my heart. The reality is that money habits, good or bad, are learned early and can stay with you for life. When I went to college, there was this great campaign about reading. Some of you may remember it. It was called "Reading is Fundamental." It encouraged us all to read more. I'm a voracious reader as a result of that. And so, as I thought about these grandchildren that I have and love, how could I teach them about money? Because we all know that money is something people don't like to talk about. Money is something that is difficult and hard. And I thought. If reading could be fundamental, why can't money be fun and mental? That became my mantra. I said, because if you have that in mind, then you can definitely bank on the future. So back to the pig that Savannah chose to put the nickel in. This little pig. The reason that she chose that pig is because my granddaughter and her brother have a four-pig piggy bank. It's all about the pig. So there is the big pig for right now. There is the pig for other people. There's the pig for something a long time from now that you have to pay for, and there's the pig for something very special. So. Let's just talk about the big pig in the room. This big pig. I told my grandchildren, "This pig is your money, your decision. Anything you want to do with it." Now that's pretty contrarian, right? Because most parents would be saying the big pig before something important. But that's the contrarian in me. In fact, it reminds me. My grandmother would say sometimes. She would stand there and look at me. She would put both hands on her hips and she'd say, "Valerie, you are being such a merry, merry, quite contrary right now." Meaning that I was doing exactly the opposite of what was expected. But she always smiled when she said that. It just kind of gave me permission to be outside of the box. So back to the big pig. I told my grandchildren, "This is your money, so take it personally." Decide what you're going to do with it. Plan for it. Plan to have fun with it. What are you going to buy? What are you going to do? And I realized that the lesson that I wanted them to learn was that when it comes to money, it really comes down to two words. The two words I wanted them to know: wants and needs. Wants and needs. Here is my favorite wants and needs story. It happened September 12, 2006. I remember precisely because that's the day Savannah was born. Her brother Morgan was nearly four. We left the hospital. We were going to head home. Been a long night. She had been born early in the morning. And Morgan said that he really wanted to stop at Walgreens because he needed another Power Ranger. So there we were, sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor on the linoleum in the toy aisle. My grandson, with his little wallet clutched in one hand, the red Power Ranger in the other, and he said, "I really, really want 
this red Power Ranger. Morgan, if it is something that you need, I will get it for you. If it's something you want, I will help you get it. But that means you got to get some money out of the big pig. The big kid, the cost rather of that Power Ranger, eight dollars. I said, Morgan, you have to get money out of the big pig. He looked at this. He looked at his wallet. He looked again at that red Power Ranger, and then he said, "I have a yellow Power Ranger. I have a blue Power Ranger. I don't really need a red Power Ranger." <laughs> And we stood up, and we walked out of Walgreens without a Power Ranger and with no tears. More? Oh yeah, <laughs> I did that too. The reality is that Morgan figured out he didn't want to spend his money. It had a value. He was starting to bank on the future. Remember that second pig, that first little one. The pig for other people. As far as Savannah is concerned, she believes that money is certainly worth picking up when you find it, but she also believes it's not intended for her. So she sees found money as purely money that she wants to give to people she doesn't know, like a homeless person. As Savannah gets older. She'll change the name on the pig for other people, and she'll know to call that pig philanthropy. And she will be in the habit and in the state of mind that giving to other people is something that you do. But she'll also learn that there's another kind of found money, and this kind will be intended to be kept by her. It is a 401k with a matching plan. Once she starts working, <laughs> I want her banking on the future. The next pig is the pig for something you have to pay for a long time from now, aka savings. It's very important because I think so often, you know, we don't give children that goal that says to them, "Yeah, you can do this. You can plan for the future. You can do it. It is a goal." The importance of this pig is that it teaches that if you make smart money decisions. And if you save and you let money stay there for a while, that is becoming financially intelligent. That's smart, and so that is certainly teaching children to bank on the future. And as they continue going through life, the other thing I hope that it will teach them is the difference again: wants and needs, but also it will teach them that in order to bank on the future. You have to save. You need to be consistent. You know when you're in a plane and they say,、uh, giving the instructions in the event of an emergency, and the mask comes down, put yours on first, and then assist other people. I believe that you need to put your own financial oxygen mask on first, and by that I mean know what your needs are, and take care of them. I think about the last pig. Which is the pig for something very special? But I need to first tell you a story, <laughs> leading to the story. If you ask my grandchildren the days of the week, they would laugh, and they'd go, "Okay, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, go-go day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday." Do you notice Wednesday has a different name? My grandchildren call me Go-Go, and they have decided that our weekly hangout is called Go-Go Day. Last month, I took my granddaughter Savannah, who is now nearly eight years old, to the American Girl doll store in Palo Alto. The American Girl doll store is like Vegas for adults. <laughs> We planned for weeks. We tried to get on every VIP list possible. Instead of wanting to go to the playground. And ride her razor scooter. Savannah was all about the American Girl website. 
She researched it like you would a flat screen TV. She read the reviews. <laughs> She looked at the costs. We discussed the money in the pig for something special, and Savannah made her shopping list. I know. She determined that she could afford the first two things on the list. Oh my goodness, go go! They're on sale. <laughs> He was just so thrilled. You notice how she noted that. And then she said, "But you know what? I do have a birthday coming up real soon, so you can share my wish list with everybody else." <laughs> Because she knows she can bank. On the future, the conclusion of the four pig piggy bank is similar to the conclusion and the pig that I presented to you when I walked out. It is when I was the domestic and international business anchor and correspondent for CNN. I talked to people about the importance of making choices. It's the same thing with the four pigs. You've got to make choices. You've got to make decisions when it comes to money. But you also have to make deposits, whether it's money from a birthday gift, whether it is a bonus from work or an inheritance. You've got to keep feeding those little pigs all their lives. Now the names on the pig may change, the purpose will change, but the habit shouldn't. So that then, even in bad times, you will be able. To be in control of your money, rather than your money being in control of you, you will be able to say it can still be fun and mental, even if the fun is finding whatever is for free in your community. Banking on the future is important. It's your money, so take it personally, and remember to always make it fun and mental. You want to play? Thank you.